Praise the Lord. We bless the Lord for another Tuesday evening that we are gathered here to fellowship in the Word of God. And I want to believe that today the Lord is going to bless us, minister to us in the world, and our lives shall never be the same again. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Our loving Father, in the name of Jesus, as we fellowship in your word this evening, we ask you to bless all my reasoners and viewers. And because you are behind your word to confirm it, you are going to confirm your world and even create in us the desire of the world, even as we continue to study. We thank you and bless you for this I'm asking in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are proceeding, and we are reading from the book of uh, Ezra, chapter 7. I'm going to read verses 9 and 10, and uh, later on we are going to read the book of Timothy. The book of Ezra, we are reading chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. Ezra had begun his journey from Babylon on the first day of the first month, and he arrived in Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month, for the glacier's heart of his God was on him. For Ezra devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord and to teaching its decrees and laws in Israel. Let's read a scripture in the book of uh, Timothy. That is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3. And I'm going to read verse 16 and 17. And the Bible says, Scripture is God breathed, and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, collecting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Today I want to share on a topic the raising. Of the, of the Ezra generation, the raising of the Ezra generation. Now, we have read about this man called Ezra who led the delegation of Israel, the second delegation of the children of Israel from the land of Babylon. He was the leader. He was leading a group of 1,600 1, people from the land of Babylon back to the land of Israel. And this Ezra was a priest. He was a priest, so he was offering sacrifices. And number two, he was a scribe. He was a lighter. And where we have led, in verse 9, he led that delegation from the land of Babylon to the land of Israel, a journey that took four months. And the Bible says the journey was safe because the glacier's heart of God was with him and number two that is is in verse 10 that he devoted himself to three things number one the study of god's law or the study of the word of god so it appears ezra was seeking to have an in-depth understanding of the word of god he wanted to understand deeply the truth of God's word. And this is a very noble desire for people who are thirsting to have an in-depth knowledge of God's word. And number two, Ezra devoted himself to observance or the, the, the practice of the word of God. He devoted himself not only to study, but also to observe and observe means practicing the word. It is not enough to be somebody who studies the word of God. Ezra went a step further. He, he began to, 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 to practice the word of God. And number three, he devoted himself to teaching God's word, his rules, and his decrees in Israel. And therefore, he was a man who was guided by the word. And therefore, as we are talking about the, the rising of the Ezra generation, God wants to raise a people in our times. People who are lovers 
and doers of the word of God. God wants to raise a generation of people who are lovers and doers of the word of God. And number two, God wants to raise the people who recognize the scripture as the voice of God in their generation. He wants to raise the people in our times who, who recognize scripture in the name of Jesus Christ. Who will live and practice the word of God and in so doing change their world. People who live by practicing the word of God and thus they are able to change their world. That is what I'm calling the Ezra generation. And number four, God wants to raise the people who are committed to learning the word of God, living it, and even learning it to others. People who are going to learn the word of God. After they learn the word of God, they practice it in their lives. And also, they are able to run it to other people. They are able to give it to other people. They are able to transmit that knowledge of the word of God they have to other people. And number five, the Ezra generation represents a people who hunger to learn more and more of God's word. Because they know in so doing, they will get a momentum for growth in the name of Jesus Christ. I wanted us to ask ourselves a question. Why should a child of God study the word of God? Why should a child of God study the word of God? I'm going to mention a few reasons. Reason number one, because of the author of the word of God. Because of the author of the Bible. The Bible as we know it, both the Old and the New Testament, is the inspired word of God. That's why where we read in the Bible, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says, all scriptures, the 66 books we have in the, in the Bible, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament, they make up the word of God. They make up the Bible. That word is inspired of the Holy Spirit. And it is profitable for teaching. That is what theologians call doctrine. It is profitable for rebuking. It is profitable for collecting and also training in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete in every good work. Number two, Second Peter chapter 1. If you read verse 20 and 21, the Bible says, For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but the prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, the scripture was not from the mind of man. It was the Holy Spirit of God who was working through man to bring to us the word of God. So reason number one, why every child of God should hunger, thirst, and study the word of God is because God is the author of the Bible. You should be a Bible leader because the author of the Bible is God. Number two, because of the often repeated commands to read it. There are repeated commands in the Bible that we should read it. For example, when you read the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, This book of the law should not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate on it day and night. It will make your ways prosperous and shall give you good success. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We also read in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. Or 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Paul is admonishing Timothy, his spiritual son. Stand there to show yourself approved unto God, a workman 
that need not to be ashamed defining defining the word of truth Timothy was instructed study the word of God let prove yourself that you qualify to share the word of God with other people and you are not ashamed of your work very important and Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 Jesus said a man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. So why should a child of God read the word of God? Because of the often repeated commands to read the word of God. Number three, because the Bible is God's chosen way to accomplish the Bible, the word of God, is God's chosen way to accomplish his divine will. For we know Sinners are saved by believing the message of this book. When sinners believe the message of the Bible, they are saved. Their sinners are forgiven. Their sins are forgiven. They are made light with God. And we also know that saints or believers are sanctified by the message of the word of God. Gospel of John chapter 17 and verse 7. You are sanctified by the word of God. We are sanctified by the word of God. Reason number four, why a child of God should study the word of God. It is because our enemy, the devil, has read the Bible. Just imagine, child of God, that you are enemy, you are tempter, you are adversary, the devil has read the word of God. If you don't read the word of God, if you don't know what is in this book, then the tempter will come and will not be able to tempt you uh, by misleading you through the word. If you read the book of Matthew chapter 4, where we see Jesus was tempted by the devil, three times Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Jesus knew the word of God. But if you look in that Matthew chapter 4, the fourth quotation it is written was quoted by Satan, was quoted by the devil. And he was quoting the book of Psalms 91. He was quoting verse 11 and 12, and he actually misquoted. Imagine the devil had, had the guts to go and to, to try or tempt the Lord Jesus Christ, he knew he was the son of God. He knew he was the word of the living God. He knew he knew the Bible and he tempted him. What about you and me? We need to study the word of God, feed ourselves with the word of God, so that when the tempter, the devil, comes to us, we know what is written. I want to remind you that whatever quotation Jesus made in Matthew chapter 4, he was quoting the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, showing that every child of God should know the word of God, should know the Bible, and be able to know what is written. Number five, every child of God should thirst and hunger for the word of God and study the word of God because of the example set by the Apostle Paul. When I was reading in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, if you read verse 13, it is a very good verse. Paul is requesting Timothy to bring him the scrolls, especially the parchment that he had left at Troas with coppers and parchments where copies or lighting material made of skin. So the old apostle, though he never left prison because after this, Paul was killed. But even in that old age, even when he's in prison, he is longing for the word of God. He wants to hear what God is saying. He never wanted to prepare a sermon. No, he was not preparing a sermon. No, it was not a sermon he was preparing. But he wanted to be inspired 
by leading books. He had preached for over 30 years, yet he desired to study the word of God. He had sat at a teacher called Gamaliel, who was a teacher of the law, yet he had a vast for books. He had seen the Lord, yet he had a vast for the books. He had a wider experience than most men do, but yet he, he wanted to, to, to have more of God's word. Paul had been caught up in the third heavens, was given a revelation by God. Up to a point, God had to put in him a thorn in the flesh to hit off him from being puffed up. Yet, we see him in prison, haggling for the word of God. With all that experience, maybe you could thought Paul could have sat in prison telling stories about his experience in the ministry, like what old people do. But Paul is thirsting for more of God's word. May you thirst for more of God's word in the name of Jesus. May you study the word of God. May you fill yourself with the truth of God's word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number six. Why a child of God is to study the word of God? Because the Bible alone provides answers to the questions of life. The Bible only provides answers for the questions of life. For example, the Bible answers the question, where did I come from? And that explains that we are created by God in his own image and his likeness. Number two, the Bible asks us the question, why am I here? Why are you on earth? You and me, we are here on earth to serve God's purpose. Your life is, is attached to a divine purpose from heaven. Your life and my life are attached to a divine, a divine purpose from heaven. And therefore, we have to fear God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man where am i going after this where are you going jesus went to prepare a place for us and he's coming for us with that where he is we may be there also number seven because we will never have opportunity to apply many of the verses after we leave this earth there are so many things or promises in god's word that we will never get an opportunity to fulfill them unless we study the word of God, practice the word of God in this life. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. All the promises in God's word should be known by you so that in knowing the promises, you may be able to claim with them in this life. And number eight, the last but not the least, because the ultimate proof of our faith is the Bible. The Bible is the ultimate proof of your faith. What it says, you are what God says you are. You have what God says you have. You can do what God says you can do. And therefore the word of God is yours. May God increase your hunger. May God increase your thirst. May God increase your longing for his word. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 119, if you lead fast 130, Psalms 119 and verse 130. The Bible says, The unfolding of your word gives light and gives understanding to the simple. When the word of God, you read the word of God and you get its meaning, it is going to give you light and it is going to give you understanding. May you be filled with the word of God and may the light of God shine in your paths in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you that God may increase the hunger and the longing of the word of God in your life. And I want to beseech you by the masses of God. Be a leader of this book. Fill yourself with the word of God. We want to be like the herbivores. These are animals who chew the cud. When they are out there, they want to feed you the word. Now an opportunity has afforded itself. The churches are being opened. At least 100 people will be gathering for a service for about one hour. Find yourself a place in the church. 
Don't become so much used to staying at home that you have no time to come and hear the word of God. Shall we put our hands and pray? Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, I want to thank you for availing this evening to me, your servant, even to speak your divine oracles to your people. Thank you, Lord, because you are going to put in us hunger and thirst for your word. We shall be a people who lead the Holy Scriptures, seeking to know the might of God, seeking to know the will of God. For we are like the Ezra generation. Father, raise in us the love for your word. We want to be leaders of your word. We want to be people who practice your word. We want to be a people who know what is written in your word. And we want to hear even as you speak to us through the voice of scripture. I thank you, my Father, and I bless you. I'm praying for my reason and as my viewers, wherever they are. Kindly, Master, bless every one of them. Touch their lives, O oh God. Command your blessing. Oh, I release spiritual breakthrough. I release financial breakthrough. I release breakthrough in their health. Breakthrough in their career. Breakthrough in their mind. Breakthrough in the works of their hands and their fingers. Give them breakthrough everywhere. For they are your people. And they look to you as the source. May you bless us, oh God. Continue to heal our country, Kenya of COVID-19. All the nations of Africa. And even all the continents of the world. May there be healing. May there be manifestation of your glory. We give you praise. And we give you glory. For this I'm praying in Jesus' name. And some God's people say... Amen and amen.